What's up, guys? Before we get into this podcast with Rob Wells, I want to let you know that there is a new seltzer in town, Sunny D Vodka Seltzer. If you are craving summertime, if you're craving board shorts, if you're craving the best day ever, then why not supplement with Sunny D Vodka Seltzer? Because it's going to get you fired up. We're also brought to you by Legends at Express VPN. What up, Express VPN? They... Thank you guys so much for sponsoring the podcast. Guys, protect your online activity today with VPN rated number one by Business Insider. Visit our exclusive link, expressvpn.com slash go deep, and you can get an extra three months free on a one-year package. That's E-X-P-R-E-S-S-V-P-N.com slash go deep, expressvpn.com slash go deep. We're also brought to you by the legends at Athletic Greens. Guys, this is my favorite supplement to take. You just pour a pack in your water every day. You feel good. You look good. And your nutrition is out of this world. Thank you, Athletic Greens, for being our partner. I gave AG a try because I wanted to get my nutrition and health to the next level. If you're looking for an easier way to take supplements, Athletic Greens is giving you a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. Go to athleticgreens.com slash go deep. That's athleticgreens.com slash go deep. Check it out. We're also brought to you by the legends at Helix Sleep. Helix, what up? Is there anything worse than going to a mattress store and laying down on a mattress you know hundreds of people have tried out before, but while you're in what before you while an overeager sales associate asks you probing questions? Definitely nothing worse. You want to get your mattress shipped to you and the best quality mattress. I love Helix. They have the best mattresses ever. I sleep on it every night and I love it. So is my girlfriend. Helix is offering up to $350 off all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners. Go to helixsleep.com slash go deep. This is their best offer yet, and it won't last long. With Helix, better sleep starts now. All right, let's start the show. All right, let's flap up the pancakes, and let's take off my shirt. What's up, Stokers of Stoke Nation? This is Chad. Kroger coming in with the Going Deep Chat JT podcast. I'm here with my compadre, Jean Thomas. What up? Boom clap, stokers. I'm chugging some coffee. I'm coming in hot. Ooh, and we're here with the legend. You know him as Ricky <laughs> from Trailer Park Boys, but give it up for Rob Wells, everybody. Thank you for joining the podcast. Rob, Thanks for having me. How you living, dude? I'm doing okay. Nice. I just got back from a ski trip, so I'm a, I'm a little tired, but I'm good. Where, where'd you ski? Uh, place called, well, I was in Quebec, just outside Quebec City, actually. Okay, cool. Nice. It was nice. Went to a place called Bel Carche, and yeah. Have you heard of, have you heard of us? Sorry? Do you know who we are? I do now. (laughs) (laughs) It's weird when I, like, meeting someone like this for the first time, you know? Yeah, no, I listened to your, your podcast with tony hawk that was, was pretty good he's great oh thank oh, you yeah. yeah it's when we learned he was nicknamed bony cock in high school that was my main takeaway from that one <laughs> i don't know if it's me or but uh you guys are cutting in and out oh, oh okay yeah i thought i what, so you got the i'm gonna move on you got the godfather in the background there huh don corleone oh yes yeah i forgot that was in the background a couple little movies Pulp Fiction, nice. Yeah, you got some of the classics. So, uh, so what are you up to these days? Actually, we're, right now we're writing uh, a new season of Trailer Park Boys, the Jail series. So we're gonna go on camera on April third for that. Oh, very cool. The jail scenes were my my favorite from the movie. They're so brilliant. Your your character being the goalie, and then wanting to stay in oh, jail. Oh yeah, that was fun. And then when they're booting yeah, him, that... when they're forcing you out of jail. And you're screaming instructions at the remaining players. You're like, don't let them drink too many beers before the game. <laughs> yeah, that was a fun sequence for sure. Yeah, that was so Yeah, some of the jail stuff is really good. How, how did you guys, uh, how do you guys script it? Do you guys like, uh, like, do you, do you have the whole narrative already fleshed out or is, is it some of it like figured out on the day? It's all fully scripted, believe it or not. And then on the day, once we get a couple takes in the cam, we'll, we'll, we'll play around and improvise a little bit. And a lot of times it works and sometimes it doesn't. But I would say 20 to 30% of the takes are probably improvised. And, but it's all fully based on a script. So. 
It's brilliant um, stuff. It's so so funny. And then, were you guys all homies? For, thank you. Were you guys all homies for a long time before you started uh, making stuff together? A few of us were. The guy, the character plays Julian, and uh, the guy that plays Randy, and the old director Mike Lotver. We all we all knew each other, and we met Mike Smith actually on the first pilot movie. Mm. The guy that plays Bubbles. So he was actually a sound man on the on the pilot. How did you get your start? Were you guys doing stand up or what what was the what was your intro into comedy? We had a, we actually just started making uh, short films for the the local film festival here in our, in our free time. We always enjoyed it but never anticipated we could make a career out of it, I guess. So mm-hmm, sure. we had, didn't have a lot of money back then, so for fun we just we'd shoot these little short sketches and we found them funny but didn't think anybody else would and then show them to a director friend of ours and he's like yeah you guys should should do some stuff so we shot a short film called one last shot for a film festival and it went over really well so then the next year we did a a black and white movie called trailer park boys it was kind of like the pilot i guess and, and that went over have you found writing this new one that your like perspective has changed a lot like in terms dark, of... but and yeah what's that sorry sorry my bad um have you found oh like that your perspective has changed since you started writing on this new uh trailer park boys like uh i imagine you've been doing it for years is like uh do you have like a like are the jokes different in terms of your like as you mature more does it change how you write it i would say to some extent and you know obviously it's a it's quite a different world these days than it was 20 years ago so yeah, it's a lot more challenging to to write these days. I'll just I'll leave it at that. Right. We're not as free as we used to be. <laughs> Do you feel a need to include uh, like the updated technology or like uh, current events or basically what's happening in the world into it, or you just try to keep it contained to to your world? A little bit of both, I guess. We try to keep it mostly contained to our world, but you know, once in a while, we'll see something in the media that we'll play around with. And- yeah. We try not to get too too political or anything, but sometimes we'll see a nice, you know, something, some scam that we'll uh, we'll end up using in our show. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like the piss jugs thing. Believe it or not, was it was a real news story in Canada. So oh, we, really? We were all over that. <laughs> yeah. Do people send you stuff like whenever there's like a goofy crime, it pops up in your inbox? Yeah, sometimes. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. And then, so you said bubbles. Was, sorry, bubbles was the sound guy. On the original black and white trailer park was yeah he he was he's a musician originally and uh, he was doing sound on that and he just always messed around with this funny character so we uh, we shot a little short film called the cart boy and the network thought it was good and so then we were we were allowed to use him in the show as the the bubbles character did you ever think that your your comedy would translate to a wider audience like you know i feel like being canadian and you would have such a specific sense of humor did you ever anticipate it going outside to like the united states and and other or did you just think it would kind of work for you know people who understand your culture not in a million years no i'm shocked that that it's translated to so many different countries all over the world and Mm -hmm. and never yeah i never dreamed it would get this sort of response for sure I mean, originally it was just more of a, a culty underground thing here in Canada and a, a couple of places in the United States, mm. a couple other countries around the world. But yeah, now it's just, it's really blown up beyond anything we ever anticipated. In terms of like the Rotten Tomatoes of like bros hanging out at night and deciding what to put on, it has a 100% approval rating. Oh, no, sorry. You, you cut it. I, I missed that the whole thing. Um, I'll say it again. In terms of... Uh, like reviews on what to put on at midnight when you're with all your bros, it has a 100% approval rating. <laughs> That's hilarious. I love it. <laughs> I'm glad I said it. To you know, we, we grew up loving dark comedies as well. So yeah, I guess I'm not shocked by that, but I, like I said, I just think we translate to, to so many people around the world. It's it amazing. plays. It always plays. I, everyone I've shown it to loves it. It's crazy. That's hilarious. Um, do you want I guess to... everybody knows some crazy idiots like our characters, so yeah, I guess ca- it does translate. But... but they're they're dumb, but they're also like they're kind of smart. You know what I mean? Like there's a there's a full perspective behind everything they do. And they, they yeah, I guess that's a good way to put it. They always mess up somehow, but 
you can you you appreciate how deep their mind goes on the silly things they're focused on. Yeah, for sure. I mean, we've always said, you know, when you strip all the the guns and the drugs and everything away, that it really comes down to, to love and family. I guess we we try to keep as much heart in it as we can. And, you know, the, the characters would pretty much do anything for each other, any any of the residents in the trailer park. So it does have a nice, you know, that element to it, I guess, too, apart yeah. from all the craziness. That's sweet. Yeah, you got to have that. Uh, do you want to, let's, do you want to jump in some, to some questions? We'll, we'll, uh, we'll give some people some advice. Sounds good. I don't know how good of advice it will be, but sure, let's try it. All right, we're going to dive right in. Uh, what up, Stokers? Uh, big fan here, long time fan. I do have a question for you. Uh, just a little background. I got a vasectomy uh, a couple months, actually a few months back, and it all worked out and everything. Uh, I will say it was slightly more swelling and discomfort than the doctor wanted me to believe. I think they just kind of lied to you to get it done, which is fine. Um, but, yeah, uh, all good now. Um, I'm a dad, and I have uh, a few kids, and we're done having kids, me and my wife, so we wanted to go through with the process. But my question is, uh, I've got the all clear, but I still am having some dome issues with releasing my seed. Mm. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I don't know. I still can't get over the mind block and the fear that comes with uh, busting and fear of children uh, coming at the end of that. So just kind of wanted to know if you guys have any mind blocks around, you know, busting loads. And then uh, if you have any suggestions on for me, you know, just to kind of, I don't know, let go and let uh, nut. Uh, yeah, so, man, uh, just help me out here. Uh, kind of rambling on. I'm driving while asking this. But, uh, yeah, appreciate it. Love the pod. Thanks, guys. So uh, this listener, he is having trouble getting over the, the mind block of accepting that now he's shooting blanks. Um, do you have any advice for him to, to um, get over it? I don't know what the advice is, but yeah, you got to get over it and start shooting again, man. That's, <laughs> I can't imagine not shooting. Hey, I had a friend hey, that had a vasectomy and he was told not to shoot anything for a bit and didn't really listen to the advice and had some major, major complications. So I get, you know, listen to the doctor for a couple of weeks or whatever the time is, but right. after that, you got to get back in the game. Wait, so your homie, he couldn't accept the medical refractory period that they recommended. So he went out shooting loads willy nilly and ended up, he ended up making another kid no he had some major complications some parts of his were turning black and Ooh. he wasn't oh. supposed to uh wasn't supposed to play around with himself and he didn't listen to the doctor so do you, do you deep down though respect that friend for needing to bust so bad i can't imagine really going two weeks but you know <laughs> with Dude, that in the back of mind and now on. after knowing what he went through i would definitely listen to the medical professionals so you're saying but for, as soon as that two weeks is up back at it yeah so you're saying for this listener you just got to get out there and start shooting loads maybe by himself and then take it to his partner <laughs> so he can uh fully accept it yeah and i think i think definitely and i almost feel like dude it's kind of sick that your brain is still telling you that you're potent like if you yeah, could, that's, a, that's, some, that's an odd one yeah if, like you almost feel like you're stronger than a vasectomy that's pretty badass so maybe revel in that a little bit. I mean, yeah, if he does create kids from that, that might be the will of God. Yeah, exactly. I would almost just like turn it into a thing that makes me horny. Like watch me prove to my doctor and to like all of established medicine that you can't stop me, dog. That's twisted, but I love it. Thank you. All right, let's dive into this next one. What up, boys? This is E. Lynn, a.k.a. E. Money Buckets, a.k.a. Bodie, coming in from uh, Central PA or Philadelphia area. Um, quick question, dude. My boys are rocking the 9 to 5, and, you know, we're trying to form a longboarding crew. Um, yeah, it's going pretty well. We're not really good at it, but, but we're here for the image, and, and we're trying to come up with names. Um, we got my boy Greg Radomski, a.k.a. Beetle McAdams in the cut. Mm. Um, just just pitching some names. I'm thinking Tito Steez could be sick. Um, we're we're going to post a sick video, fisheye lens, bombing some hills, all that stuff. But um, just wanted to get your guys, you know, savvy marketing knowledge on, on how to uh, promote the squad and maybe give us some names or whatever. Um, okay, later. 
So, uh, yeah, this guy, they have a longboarding squad, and he's trying to come up with names and then how to promote the squad, um, which kind of, you know, caters to you because you've got a squad yourself. Um, any... Uh, yeah, I'm, I don't know. I've got a longboard, longboarding squad. That's a, that's a bit of a challenge. <laughs> yeah. What are you guys jamming on? What, any thoughts? You know, I think... I think this listener knows that he's already got it covered on the nickname front. Like some of those nicknames that he was busting out were top of the line. And and then he, he mentioned a fisheye lens, so they're clearly like uh, cinematically inclined. I think the way to nice. market your longboard crew is that you guys all probably suck at longboarding, and that's got to be the pitch. Like meet the worst longboarding crew in the world, but with the fattest nicknames and the most stylized camera angles. So just lean into your strengths. Like, you can almost do a video of you guys just nicknaming people while you're standing on a longboard. Mm. In terms of names, That's good. yeah. So you're saying make a short film to have given them nicknames? Yeah, be like, this is a longboarding video, but really it's just them holding their boards and being like, all right, your nickname is going to be Bumpy McSlap Slaps. You're the Pebble Hopper. Yeah. You're a uh, Nine to Grind. <laughs> Right, so their 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 talent is not in uh, actual shredding, but just the creativity around their names. Everything else around longboarding culture, which yeah. is like super robust. I mean, there's yeah. a million different paths you could go down, literally yeah. and figuratively. Yeah, it's, it, I mean, it's tough to come up with nicknames too. Like, you got to know the homies. Yeah, um, but something around. Yeah, for sure. Rob, Rob, do you do you or at least at least some pictures of them or something? It's hard to come up with a nickname without seeing them or knowing them. Yeah, or like what town they're in. Like, I don't even know what street to add to the guy's nickname, you know? Like Bobby Windjammer or something right. like that, because my homie Bob That's lives on Windjammer. <laughs> That's a good one. Um, are, do you have a nickname? Do, you, do do your friends refer to you as anything in particular? Not overly. Back in school, they used to call me Rob Noxious, which was kind of lame, but <laughs> I was pretty obnoxious, so I guess it sort of worked. But. <laughs> well, you showed them, though, dude. You parlayed it. I guess I rocked it, yeah. That's all you can do. We're obnoxious. That's a good one. <laughs> um, all right, should we do another one? Yes, sir. It's been some tough cues today. These guys are really suffering. Yeah, hopefully I'm better at this next one. I'm not a longboard nicknamer. Yo, what is up, Stoke Lords? Uh, I'm calling. This one's a uh, problem, a question for JT. Um, you know, I know JT used to, or maybe still does, had a fear of death. And it's kind of something I've been uh, running into lately. Um 27, and just like this past year, I've had this sometimes crippling fear of death. Um, don't really know how to get over it. And, uh, you know, it's like just death scares the shit out of me. Sometimes I just weirdly think about dying how i'm gonna die you know what's after death and it scares the hell out of me gives me a lot of anxiety and uh you know jt what did you do to combat that and get over that anyways thanks still lords later um dude thank you for your cue yeah when i was like 24 and i first learned about the nature of time and realized i was going to be dead forever that really uh, fucked with me for a couple months. And then I had a kind of a four to five year reprieve from active existential dread. And then, and then I couldn't get it out of my head for a couple years. Um, but I'm kind of over it now. And now I have more present day fears. And so I think what I did was is I stacked my life with more goals and more responsibility. So now I almost look at death as a, a welcome relief from all of that. And I know that sounds kind of negative, but it's not. It's about being so into your life and, and so invested in the things around you that it's just about getting everything done before you die. And then, and then when you're in that kind of headspace, you're kind of, you feel like instead of shying away from death, you're kind of hurling towards it with like agency. And I think that's the key is to feel like, like you're almost does that make sense? You're almost ready to face it, bro. Like it's coming, but you're coming for it too. 
That was beautiful. Rob, do you have a fear of death? I don't know. I'm, I'm getting older, so I, it's something everybody thinks about, I guess. But I lost one of my bros when he was younger, 22. So after that, you just kind of, I don't know, you got, have the mindset of just live your life, enjoy every day, because a lot of people don't get as, as much time as as the rest of us, I guess. So I try to live my life like that. It's just enjoy every day, enjoy every moment, because you never know mm-hmm. when death is going to come knocking. Rob, and I think it would just be hard to focus on and think about it too much. That was better Easier than what said I said. Than done. And I, I, dude, I, I will say this too: your brain will get tired about stressing about the same thing, and it'll move on to something else. Like your brain can't fixate on death forever, unless you're like Woody Allen. Um, don't cope the way he did, and then, uh, <laughs> but you'll you'll find a way. You, trust me, something new will come up that scares you more than death. That's what I try to do. I try to find other things that scare me more than death, and they're out there. Rob, when you when you guys start coming up with nice. your with your stuff, did you? Um, did you have fears about, uh, you know, sort of your, your whole lifespan in terms of being a comedian for your whole lifespan and, and how to continue everything and where it would go? Or did you just sort of ride the wave? I guess a little bit of both, but yeah, now I'm just sort of riding the wave. I never thought it would ever go on for this long, I guess. So mm-hmm. it's amazing that it did. It's been a lot of fun for sure, but yeah, when we first started, we never, I mean, it was supposed to be just a six episode miniseries. Never thought that we'd be riding the wave this long, so to speak. So, Dude, it speaks to what you did. It connects like through generations. Yeah, it's pretty incredible. And just, we, we had no idea that it would turn into what it has, I guess. So yeah. we were all very surprised and pleasantly surprised, but yeah, I never saw it coming for sure. Yeah, I, um, it's interesting. I, I think uh, well, when you guys first started to have some success, did you have like a fear of uh, of losing it, or did you like how, how were those first feelings when you guys first kind of popped off? So you, you cut it there part way through. When you guys first had your first instance of like success, did you? Yep. Were you just overjoyed, or did you have a fear of losing it? Like how how did you deal with those initial feelings? Um. At first, it was kind of overwhelming because it was just so unexpected, I guess. And, yeah. you know, getting recognized and stuff was kind of a little freaky. And, yeah, yeah, I'd say overwhelming more than anything. Yeah. It was enjoyable and it opened up some doors, but it was just very unexpected. And yeah. So it definitely took some getting used to. And there's still days where I'm still not used to it because we never expected to get thrown into this, you know, the, the fame spotlight, I guess, a little bit as much as we did anyway. Right. Should I hop on another one? Yeah, let's do another one. Dude, you're not gonna die anytime soon. What up, legend? Um, my name's Adam. I uh, just I had this question about this girl I've been seeing, and she's my girlfriend, so my GF, right? She is very particular about stuff, and I think I'm just ending it with her because it's kind of ridiculous at this point. Because you know, she's she gets pissed off even when I ask a simple question like, "How are you doing?" She's like, "No, no, no, don't." You know, don't say, how are you doing? Like, I don't like when people say that. It's like, okay, so what do you want me to say? So that's kind of weird. Yeah, bro. Um, she's If she's taking exception with how are you doing, I mean, obviously there's other greetings and salutations, but that one's the gold standard. And uh, I don't think <laughs> in my entire existence I've ever heard someone find issue with it. So, um, sounds like you've been a soldier throughout and, uh, I'm sure you've articulated to her that you'd like a little bit more of a break when it comes to, uh, talking. So I might, uh, move on, but with love, you know, wish her well, you hope the best for her. And you know, there's a guy out there who will say, como estas? Rob, are you married? I am married. Has your wife ever like just like gone ape shit because you were like, "What up?" No, not that I can remember. She's gone ape shit about other stuff, but no, I think that that dude needs to get the fuck out. Life's too short. That's unless it was just a bad day. But man, that sounds crazy. It sounds like somebody that he's never going to make happy, and so he'll never be happy. I think he needs to to move on. It could be horrible advice, but that's what I would do. Get the fuck out. 
Yeah, yeah you, dude. Typically, I'm a little hesitant to tell some dude to get out of a relationship because I take those things seriously. But uh, this poor fuck. Yeah. Yeah. It sounds like he's got one foot out the door anyway. So. Yeah, she's making it easy on him. Like yeah, when, totally. When she's like, when you're moving out, and she's like, "Where are you going?" Be like, "No, I don't like where are you going." How about, <laughs> "Am I heading out?" Yeah. I, I have something you could do. You know, <laughs> when you're breaking up with her, you can ask her. You could say, "How am I doing?" I'm out the door. Yeah. Shove it there in her go. face. Nice. Yeah. And then and then be like, "But I'll love, I'll love, I'll love." Um. Yeah, that's yeah. Keep, keep it peaceful, I guess. Keep the love, but yeah, I think it's time to move on. Yeah, she sounds hostile. I think she needs someone who doesn't speak traditional English. Mm-hmm. Like I went with Spanish. Signing is really big right now. Mm. Maybe a guy just comes home and just hits her with a. Yeah. I, I don't know if that checked out, but I just saw Creed three, so I'm a little hip on it. What is that? Um, I don't know. That's just kind of how they do. I know this means angry. This means angry. That was good. Yeah, so when you're moving out, you feel like... Beautiful. Uh, should we do one more I'm question, more. and then uh, then we'll call it a day? Sure. All right. Hey, Chad and JT. I've been trying to read more as a New Year's resolution. Picked up a sick book about dinosaurs. While reading it, I discovered there's a relative of the T-Rex called Stokosaurus. Mm. Got me thinking what it might be like to kick back and have the cold ones with the dinosaur. I'm sure they know how to get down. Anyway, just need to let the legends know that our prehistoric pal is keeping it real and throwing down Stoke. Take care, guys. Daniel. Not really a quesh. No. And also, I like that this dude assumes, in a sick way, that the dinosaurs name themselves. Mm-hmm. What else is there? Dude, the rap I mean the raptor's number one for me. Dude, the rap I heard I heard the raptor had feathers. It looked more like a rooster. Oh and yeah, then, I did hear that. It's kinda and, lame. And then Spielberg for Jurassic Park was like, yo, we need like a kind of a cool bad guy. And they're like, we could juice up the raptors and make them like a wolf pack sort of thing. Absolutely. Rob, what's your favorite dinosaur? I, I always thought the T-Rex was pretty badass, but I didn't know about this other dinosaur either. I guess I, I have to start reading more. Are you still get, get more current with the dinosaurs? Are you Stokosaurus guy now? I might might have to jump, yeah, jump off the T-Rex and become a Stokosaurus. Dude, man. I think the Stokosaurus has longer <laughs> arms. I think if the Stokosaurus were a human, I think it'd be you, Rob. <laughs> so who's gonna make that truck? This, what? Ported the Raptor, and then the T Rex came out from Dodge. So I guess, yeah, I guess GM's gonna have to make a Stokosaurus truck. Oh but, right! Oh wow, dude. Yeah, I, I mean, in the next in the next Jurassic Park, I, it's kind of overplayed with uh, the, at, like the T Rex, and like they just keep going bigger with that. If they just threw in a Stokosaurus and you just chill, how do the characters deal with that? Yeah, like if the dinosaur's not trying to kill him, and he's like, "Y'all do your thing. I'm just sunbathing." Yeah, and they were like, "Fuck, we still got to kill him." Yeah, and then you're like, "But why? This guy's laid back." <laughs> yeah, and then he's, he's got so his, chill. He's got his chick, and they're just you know drinking swamp water and have fish swimming through their giant toes in the creek, and just yeah. like just that passive enlightened lifestyle. Yeah, could be a good critique on human violence. Yeah, man's invasive imperial nature for yeah. sure, which. I actually think is what annihilated the dinosaurs in the first place. I'm not buying the whole Ice Age thing. Yeah, good call. Uh, Rob, also, maybe the Stokosaurus could be the Woody. If they bring back the car of the Woody, they make it the Stokosaurus. Ah, uh, there you go. I like it. All right, Rob, it was so nice talking you, to you. You guys should write the next Jurassic Park. I, I, I'd watch that film. Did you like that pitch? Yeah, that's great. Well, there seems to be a <laughs> connective tissue with all of us. What about Jurassic Trailer Park? Ooh. That, that would be interesting. We could do the animated version of that, I guess. That'd be fun. Yeah. yeah. And Dude. it's all like fun dinosaurs who kind of act like bros in a trailer park in Canada. I would like to see those characters going up against some dinosaurs. That would be that would be interesting. Rob, if that gets made, you get to voice the T-Rex. And you're, yes. That's a promise. You're EP. You get points on the project. Dude, you're, you're G'd up from the feet up on this. We'll take care of you, brother. <laughs> all over it. It was such a pleasure talking to you. It was an honor. I'm a huge, huge fan, man. Yeah. Thank you for coming on. Yeah, thanks thanks for having me, guys. It was fun. Awesome. All right. Well, you have a good one. Later, brother. All right, you too.
What's up, guys? I'm interrupting this podcast. Let you know once again that uh, Sunny D has a new vodka seltzer out, and it's delicious. If you want to brighten up your springtime and get in the mood, supplement it with Sunny D vodka seltzer. All right. We're also brought to you by Legends of Express VPN, guys. I know you probably use incognito mode, but let me tell you why incognito mode on your browser and your internet is not enough. I know you're probably thinking, why not just use it? Well, let me tell you something. Incognito mode does not hide your activity. It doesn't matter what mode you use or how many times you clear your browsing history. Your internet service provider can still see every single website you've ever visited. That's why even when I'm at home, I never go online without using ExpressVPN. It's an app that reroutes your internet connection through their secure service so your ISP can't see the sites you visit. It also keeps all of your information secure by encrypting 100% of your data with the most powerful encryption available. And uh, it's so good that you don't realize it's going on, but it's keeping you protected. It's available on all devices, phones, computers, even your smart TV, so there's no excuse for you to not be using it. Guys, the, the further along we go into this crazy world, the more we are at risk of hackers coming in and stealing our passwords, stealing our valuable information. That's why you got to get ExpressVPN. I use it. I love it. Protect your online activity today with the VPN rated number one by Business Insider. Visit our exclusive link, expressvpn.com slash go deep, and you can get an extra three months free on a one-year package. That's expressvpn.com slash go deep, expressvpn.com slash go deep to learn more. All right. We're also brought to you by the legends at Athletic Greens. Athletic Greens, what up? Um, Guys, I love Athletic Greens. I started taking Athletic Greens because I wanted to take my nutrition to the next level. And it's so easy to use. It tastes good. It makes you feel good. Literally, if I am not feeling good in the morning, especially, I take it every day, but if I'm not feeling good, I'll get some Athletic Greens. It gives you that boost you need where you feel like, ooh, I'm getting all the prebiotics, probiotics, vitamins, everything I need in my body at one sesh. Makes me feel fantastic. It's all good stuff. Um, it's the health, healthiest thing you can do in under a minute. It's powerful because it's so easy to fit into your lifestyle. It's one scoop of powder mixed with water once a day. If you're looking for an easier way to take supplements, Athletic Greens is giving you a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. Go to athleticgreens.com slash go deep. That's athleticgreens.com slash go deep. Check it out. Finally, we're brought to you by Legends at Helix Sleep. Guys, I have a Helix mattress. I love it. I uh, ordered one online. I took their two-minute sleep quiz. And, you know, I have a pretty complicated mattress preference. I like firm, but with the softness. And I like all that kind of stuff mixed into one. So that when I sleep on it, I just feel good. I look good. And uh, it's the best mattress I've ever slept on. And I'm being... 100% 100% sincere with you. My girlfriend loves it. She's like, where'd you get this mattress? I'm like, Helix Sleep. And make sure you use code GODEEP. Oh, wait, we're sleeping on the same bed. But that's for you. So, guys, let's see if there are any more things. I mean, it's the number one mattress picked by GQ and Wired Magazine. Helix is offering up to $350 off all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners. Go to helixsleep.com slash go deep. This is their best offer yet, and it won't last long. With Helix, better sleep starts now. All right, let's get back to the show. Let's Um, see if... uh, Get some more questions in here. Because we kind of went through them all. Yeah, we, we blasted through them quick. We were in Tacoma, dude. What a city. Great place. Dude, I know. I, um... Ooh, I found more questions. You know what's interesting is being around the Osh in the north, for me. Yeah. You know, because... For me, I always just feel like the ocean doesn't go past San Francisco. And then it's it's interesting to go into places. Like, we were talking to people, and they were like, you should surf out here. I'm like, oh, I didn't even realize you guys had waves. Like, it's just like the ocean when it's outside of a warm climate just feels non-existent. But then you go, and it's like a whole other culture where they catch lobsters, and um, some guys even shred cold waves. That's insane. Yeah. Yeah, the surfers of Washington. It's like a – and you know what's also cool is they have an ice bath every day yeah they're getting all those benefits for their brown fats every time they shred and they don't have to worry about coolant in a freezer and all that kind of shit that's wild yeah it's way more efficient yeah it's crazy it's insane 
fire. Dude, have you been paying attention to this Haley Bieber, Justin Bieber thing? No, I saw I saw that Selena's distressed over the drama, so spill it. I guess, and this is what I've picked up from my GF and from the lady I do Pilates with, but um, people just think Justin's still in love with Selena. No. Yeah. So, so, he, so what's what's the drama? They got like clips of him, like when maybe when he was with Selena, being like, "She's the greatest. I'm so in love with her. She's my one." And then he'll do interviews, and they're like, "What was your first date with Haley?" He's like, "I don't know. I don't remember." Mm. But then when he talks about Selena, it's like he comes alive. Really? Yeah. And then at his birthday, I guess, he's like, "I'm so glad." I didn't end up with what I wanted. And a lot of people think that was like a reference to Selena. Oh. And then a lot, of, I guess, like Selena did a cooking show. Then Haley started doing a cooking show. Mm. And so, I don't know. It sounds like it was his first love. That's very distressing to me because Haley and um, Justin seem like the perfect couple. They seem great together. They seem great together. Seem like they were good for each other. Seem like they were really, really happy. Um. And to hear, I mean, that's really kind of, you know, deflates my boner. Yeah, mine too. Yeah. My soul boner. I, I, I could never have anticipated. I thought he was totally over her. I thought so too. I thought, I thought he kind of found his person. Yeah. Do you think he's reached a point where they've been married for what, like three or four years now, where he's kind of like a little bit bored of it? I think so. And I think she's... Uh, infatuated with him and he needed that after Selena kind of maybe knocked him around a little bit not mm -hmm. in any kind of dark way but you know sounded like it was more of a push and pull and then with Haley he just knows he has it and maybe he's starting to take that for granted that makes sense there could be something yeah like that you're talking about with like the uh, wanting what you can't have where he's reached a point where it's like he He's desiring that again, and he's... He needs the thrill. But mm -hmm. I think he's going to ride this out, stay faithful to Haley, and then write her a beautiful album yeah. about a deeper kind of love. That, that I'm glad I didn't get what I want thing is kind of uh Yeah, why throw that concerning. on the napkins, bro? Yeah. You know Haley's cruising. Come and on, then, Justin. like, yo, I'm not a detective, but it's going through his... I'm 35, by the way. I was going through his slides on his Instagram. Mm. It's from his birthday. She wasn't in one of the photos until slide four. Mm. That's a huge indicator. Like, what the fuck, dude? That's I'm, your girl, bro. That's like, at minimum, slide two. What do you think they need to do? Bro, I think they need to detach a little bit from the spin of their lives. Like, if I was them... I would just go for a walk that lasted three weeks together, mm. suffer through something together, know that that person, feet busted, skin crackled from sunburn, is going to love you in all your conditions, even if your voice is hoarse from a lack of hydration. You know, I think, I think we can take this into our own hands. I think we can save them. And you know how? Why? How? We hire one of our buddies, I'm thinking Mongo, to rob their place, but get into a confrontation where Justin has to protect um, Haley. Dude, can I, can I, I love it. Can I spin it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's eight degrees. Yeah. I think Haley's got to save Justin. Haley's got, don't you think that'll emasculate him? I'm worried about his boner post fact, but yeah. I also think like, he seems like the type that actually might be like, Wow, you really got my back. Right. You stabbed Mongo. So Mongo does have to die. I think but he's Mongo down for wants that. to die. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. I think he's down for that. He's chasing that. And at the hands of Haley Bieber and like a national kind of cause celeb, like, yeah, dude, Mongo be down. How you about to take care of his uh, cousins, though? Because you know he looks out for them. Yeah. Even the one that's half donkey. Dude, yeah, he's he found like the first sort of donkey centaur. Yeah, and he but he takes good care of that thing. Yeah, he feeds it hay and sometimes gives it pudding. He gives him like whole source food, like like really well sourced food. Too. No, he loves it. Like it's yeah. just like a normal like full humanoid. Yeah, it's crazy seeing that guy. I'll adopt the the half donk. 
Yeah, I think you'd be you, you two get along really well. Yeah, he gets mad at me for calling it a half donk. He's like, just call him Mark. That's his name. Remember when you got him too drunk and he did a screaming eagle that night? Mm-hmm. Screaming eagle, for those of you who don't know, it's where you puke and shit at the same time. So you're screaming as an eagle on the shitter. Sorry, half donk. Uh, which is interesting for him because he was standing, but still screaming. It's a whole thing with a half donkey, half man. No, and I took care of him too. I let him, we slept side by side in my bed. Yeah. And I remember my GF in the morning was like, you couldn't put him in the pool house. I was like, come on, you know, I can't other this guy. Mm-hmm. He needs to feel like he gets the same treatment as anyone else does when they get too blitzed. Mm. Do you hear that there's a controversy going around? What? I heard that Mongo's aunt just decided that he was half donkey, not half horse. Um, to try and because he came to the family a little bit cocky and she was like you're donkey and so that that sort of subdued him a little bit and he's like right. oh, I'm not a full stallion I'm just kind of a I'm a even, secondary whatever horses equine. are equine yeah 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 dude that's I don't know why parents do that to their kids it's so brutal because it's like it's your spawn mm. like you're the one who had sex with a horse or a donkey like you should be proud of that I mean I know it was a wild horse and he ran off afterwards and didn't support the fam the way you wanted him to but like you can't take that out on the kid Mm. like 100 percent. you gotta love that kid irrespective of what kind of horse the dad was yeah one time i was partying with him and i i got really drunk and we were doing coke together and i just stared at him for like five minutes i was like you're a horse you're a horse and benny benassi was playing and just pumping through the speakers and i was like you're a horse and he looked back at me, he's like, I am a horse. That's fire. That's straight fire. Thanks, dude. Dude. Yeah, man. yeah, bro. Yeah, bro. How about these rising interest rates? It's crazy. It's making it tough for people to buy houses. Yeah. Well, yeah, well, it's always confusing to me because if the interest rates are rising, but it's tougher to buy a house, does that mean that so many people are more interested in a house? And so that's why it's harder to buy a house. And how do they even determine interest rates? Like how many people are interested? I think the Fed does it, right? Yeah. Do they do a survey? They don't ask. They just tell us what's up. I've never been asked. No, I wouldn't even know what to say. I'd be fucking super confused. Yeah. Uh, Should we look at the news? Yeah. Let's see what the news has to say. Border abduction. Uh oh, someone grabbed a skateboarder. Yeah, that's like straight into our cause. Um, guys, there is a skateboarder that has been abducted. His name is Frankie, and um, he's abducted by rollerbladers. These wars, they never stop. They ebb and flow. There's periods of peace. And then at some point, it's just hardwired into our tribal nature. People want war. They want to be the top dog. Mm -hmm. Bladers and skateboarders. You can put up barriers to the violence, and you can quell it for a bit. And in good times, that hankering can go away. But at a certain point, times get tough, and people revert to their ugliest behavior. And they look to take it out on someone else who they feel is responsible. And it's our fault. That's why. Fault. That's why I scooter. You stay outside of the drama. I rollerbladed for a little bit and guys came up to me nonstop. I mean, I even saw a van pull up outside the skate park. I was close. That's the thing is like scootering just straight Switzerland. Mm-hmm. Um, what else is going? We're going to Miami tomorrow? Yeah, Palm Beach first. I've never been to Palm Beach. Oh, it's nice, dude. Yeah. Yeah, it's bougie as fuck. It's very nice. Is that where Margot Lago is? Uh, I think so. I don't know. Yeah, let me look it up. Should we go to Mar a Lago? I'd be down. What's what's like what goes on there? I heard they have a great buffet. Oh, I'm always down to get some food. Yeah, it's in Palm Beach. Oh, it's owned by Donald Trump? Oh, for real? Oh. It's called uh the Winter White House or the Southern White House. Hmm. Uh. 62,000 square foot mansion. God damn, dude. Do you look at their menu? Save some for the rest of us. Hey, Aaron, do you want to come to Mar-a-Lago? 
for sure. Wow. That's cool. Is that where he's got, like, classified documents? That's where he took them, yeah. Dude, speaking of politics, I watched Russell Brand on Bill Maher. Mm-hmm. Guy's a great talker, but he just never stops. Yeah, it's it's. I was just listening on Joe Rogan. He makes a good point, and you're like, "All right, let's clip it there." And yeah. then he's like, "And then the thing is, if you really look at the dynamic and the diatribes that come from MSNBC and compare them to Fox, they are both equally toxic in the corporate overlords who control what you think and force you to live the way that they do and want you." docile and i'm like all right he's gonna stop there and he goes and through docility is where we as humans gain in our lethargy we become fat and dumb and easily controllable and that leads to ramifications with you and you and all of a sudden we have our knives out and we're attacking family members and we don't know why but it's because we've been programmed to believe that that's the only way to settle our issues and what's underneath that issue is the greater issue of fear, fear of death, death. But is death inevitable? Sure, sure, why not? I'm happy to die. I feel pretty. And then you're like, what? I suppose that goes into a sort of anarchist sort of where you self-govern, but not the anarchy of the... It's sort of total self-governance. And you're... Well, because the media will tell you that anarchy is bad. That anarchy is you versus me and me versus you and, oh, we can't trust anyone. But they make money off us not trusting one another. Can you answer that question, guy on Bill Maher with me? Can you answer everything I just said? Look, I just work for MSNBC, and can you give me one example of us not telling the truth? Oh, God, one example. Okay. One example. How about Joe Rogan with Ivermectin? Joe Rogan with this. How about the perpetual um, non-coverage of medicinal benefits that could have been attained through Republican-driven means and research? What about that? And also on top of that, what about Iraq? Iraq in 2002. Do you remember what you did then? Um, well, exactly, and, exactly. Uh, Bill, can we edit this out of the show? Bill handled it well. Uh, you're just snickering at the side. Yeah, Bill's just. <laughs> all right, and then you go. All right, Russell, chill, chill, chill. That's the thing. It's like, I mean, he'll talk so much, but I'm always looking at the deep cut of his tea. Dude, the thing is, it's like you don't expect it, right? Because yeah. he walks in there looking like a magician, and then he starts talking about the heaviest shit imaginable. My cousin said his hair smelled really nice. Really? He yeah. looks like he takes good care of it. He's healthy. Yeah. yeah. And I, I, look, I, I, I think he says things that are of good value, but I'm like, bro, please stop. Yeah. But I love Bill Maher. Dude, Bill Maher's hilarious. He's just been sticking to it for 30. He never changes. Do you, do you think when Bill Maher has sex, he's always smirking? Yeah, he's like, <laughs> <laughs> new rule. I'm an old Democrat. New rule. <laughs> I come first this time. Oh, you're sad? <laughs> wah, 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 wah. I'm sorry. If I want to come first, that's just what's going to happen, guys. And look, you can boo me for it, but I know what works for me. <laughs> I'll use a toy afterwards if that makes you happy. <laughs> New rule. <laughs> yeah, his, it's dude. The toughest part about that show is when he's doing his bad jokes, and then they, because he's great off the cuff, but the written stuff always falls kind of flat. And then they'll cut to whatever comedian he has on the show, and they have to fake laugh at his jokes. But the thing I will give him credit for is sometimes when they fake laugh, like it was like Patton Oswalt or something, he'll turn to him like, "Please don't fake laugh." Like he knows. Oh yeah. Yeah, there's like a self awareness to it that's. I love tough what, to beat. I love when he, when he drops the mic. He'll be like, but we're talking about obesity. It's not healthy. That's good. Do you like that? That was good. Were you on me for that? Yeah, hit it Aaron. again. Yeah. Hit it again. Mm -hmm. But we're talking about obesity. It's not healthy. When are we going to just say it? Fat people are fat. They die earlier. It's disgusting to look at. <laughs> he clearly really dislikes obese people. But I don't disagree with this point overall. Um yeah, what else does he talk? Do you listen to his podcast? I try, but he's he he's he kind of doesn't let the other person. Uh... Here's the thing, I'm a pothead. I smoke weed. That's good. It's <laughs> a good bill. Thanks, Bill. Love it's, you, Bill. I do. I love you. 
Yeah, I, dude, I actually I like him too. He's great. Yeah, he's, he's his like, show always rips. I mean, I would love hanging out with him because I would like to kick it with the, him. He has that douchey energy that I love. Where you love just, a douche. I love a du- I love a good douche. I mean, I love Kevin. It it doesn't uh, offend you ever. You're like a you're like so. You're liberated by the fact that they can live their lives oh, yeah. douching through the day. It's beautiful. It, and I, I just like to sit back and watch. It's, it's very nice. That's cool. Um, Chad, should we get into the next part? Should we do... Yeah. Who's your beef of the week? Um, my beef of the week is... <laughs> Dude, Frank at the squat rack. I know his name's Frank. Because I've seen the trainers call him Frank. But I'm always watching him. I'm on the assault bike getting ready to do legs, okay? And Frank is on there, but he's taking his time. He's listening to an audio book. He's listening to probably Russell Brand's audio book because he just doesn't actually do the squats. And I'm like, dude, if you're going to claim that property, look around you. Have perspective, you know, look around, look and see. You'll if if he looked, he would see me done on the assault bike because I've been going for forty five minutes. I've been waiting for him to get off so I could go deep with my squat, and he's still there. And uh, you know, I just think it's uh, disrespectful. I think it's part of what's wrong with our society is that like if you can't have respect for other people's time on the squat rack, and if you can't have the awareness that Everyone in the gym, the whole community needs to do legs if they want to boost their T and feel good. Then you got to make yourself quick on the squat rack. You need to get out of there so that I can get in because right now all I did was cardio and I'm pissed. Dude, my beef is the exact same. For real. For real. I mean, First of all, every gym in America could use three more squat racks. Preach it, brother. Every time I go into the 24 at North Hollywood, there's at least four people waiting in line. And the thing about squats is people like to take long breaks in between to get back to 100 so they can have full exertion on their set, which I respect. But some people, they milly about. And when you're on the squat rack, you're on the clock, brother. We're all on the clock. We all got places to be. Get your sets in, get your reps in, and then keep it moving. Yeah. And I get it, man. I get it. When you finally get there, you want it to be yours for a little bit, and you want to do it the way you like to do it. But look, we are all in this together, and it's not the time to be an individualist, not when you're on the squat rack. you got to be thinking about other people. I'll admit, I, I did have one mess up last year. I got on the squat rack. I got lazy with it. I was listening to Will Smith's audio book. I got sucked in. I probably took 40 minutes there. Brother, I've been, I'm guilty of it. But Frank, you're a repeat offender. Look, we all we all stray once in a while. No one no one pitches a perfect game. That shouldn't be expected of you. And the fact that you're now taking accountability for it and on a public platform, I think speaks to your integrity. Are you for real right now? I mean it. I don't bullshit about stuff like that. I mean it. I fucking mean it. Can I tell you something? Please. While you were saying that, your voice turned into Vin Diesel's. That's interesting. I've never heard that before. Maybe this is the kind of perspective I need to be inhabiting. Let me test it right now. Say Brazil. Brazil. Fuck. This is Brazil. Okay. Say family. Familia. Aaron, are you seeing this? Are you witnessing this? Uh, I'm right here with you. It's nuts. Dude, I recognize that voice too. You just creamed, Aaron. <laughs> Aaron, did you just come? <laughs> you sneaky dog. Save some for us, dude. All right, Chad, who's your babe of the week? My babe of the week is, uh, it's gotta be my doggie, even though she knit my sack last night. Yeah, she knit my sack, bro. But I still love her. I love her so much. I just squeeze her. I'm like, are you the best doggy? You're the best doggy in the world, aren't you? And she looks at me and she's like, and I'm like, you're the best doggy. And then she'll nip at my sack. Dude, she got a little piece of my sack. Like I was wearing sweats. It was just, you know, it didn't hurt too much. But she's just getting excited. She nipped my sack, then she humped my leg. And I was like, you're the best doggy. 
You love her for her mistakes, dude. That's real yeah. love. You know, my place smells like piss now. <laughs> well, um, yeah. You should, but it's nice. Because of you or the dog? Well, I was going to say it's nice because now I can blame it on the dog. Right. You're just pissing all over your place. <laughs> I mean, that's how I've done it. Hyper primal, dude. I, I walked in yesterday after we came back from Tacoma, and it was just... <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> way to go, dog. Yeah, it lowers the baseline so more things are permissible. It's not all bad. No. What's your babe? My babe of the week is Tacoma, Washington. Nice. Great place, dude. And here's the thing. I'm, I'm trying to explore more when we're on the road. I had no idea they shot one of my favorite films of all time in Tacoma. Mm. Ten Things I Hate About You, Stadium High School. Nice. So on Saturday morning, I went and saw Creed Three, which was decent. None of them are going to be as good as the first Creed, which was just perfect. But I still enjoyed it and came out of it like, yeah, I'm ready to take on life. And I relate to him, even though my life was drastically different. And then I go to the high school and I see the bleachers where Heath Ledger had that iconic scene where he sings like, can't take my eyes off of you. You'd be like heaven to touch. Mm. I want to hold you so much. Mm. Thank God I'm alive. Mm -hmm. Can't take my eyes off of you. Mm. Ooh, ooh, I love you, baby. And if it's quite all right, I need you, baby, on those lonely nights. So he did that, and I got to see the place where he did that. And I wanted to go down there and sing, but the gate was closed, and there was teenagers there, and I thought it'd be weird. So I just took some selfies. School was smaller than I thought it would be in person, but still magnificent. And then I went into this place, Steel Creek, after one of our shows. I went in solo. They had a mechanical bull. I hopped on it. That was the most intense mechanical bull I've ever been on. It wasn't passive at all. I thought I tore my hamstring afterwards. And then I watched the dance floor, and the whole place knew how to uh, square dance. I felt like I was in like the movie Footloose. Like The whole place knew how to square dance. It was incredible. Mm. So Tacoma, thanks for the memories. Mm. Chad, who's your legend of the week? Dude, it's gonna be controversial, but it's Diet Coke. I know a lot of people are gonna come in like, hey, what about aspartame? And I'm like, hey, <laughs> I hear you, okay? They're like, you actually like the taste of it? Yeah, I do. I do like Diet Coke. I'm looking at you, the camera. I love Diet Coke. I love the taste of it. I love the feel of it. I love the fizz of the bubbles in my body, and I love just everything about it. I love it in my dome and I will always love Diet Coke. And even though Donald Trump said that he's never seen a thin person drink Diet Coke, I do. I do. DT also drinks like eight a day. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Um... <laughs> Dude, that's rebellious as hell. Right. Yeah, people, and everything's got bad stuff in it. Mm. Dude, kale's bad for you. Is it? Nothing's good for you. So, yeah. Nothing. Nothing. Everything's bad for you. Well, we're all just slowly dying. That's the thing. We're not, we're here for a good time, not a long time. Yeah. And look, there's some things that are worse for you, but everything's bad for you. So I just try to do the things that are bad for me that are in line with my values. Like Diet Coke. Mm -hmm. The drink of a generation. Thank you. Dude, my legend of the week, this is going to be controversial because Aaron was just stuck there for an hour, is Porto's. Mm -hmm. The restaurant in Burbank. It's my favorite. I order food from there every day. Mm. Rice, beans, and chicken. They do it better than anyone. And then there are desserts out of this world. It's, it's one of the best restaurants in LA, right? Oh, yeah. It's unbelievable. Dude, their crisp sandwich in the morning, ham and cheese, sounds basic. Something special when they do it. It is tough. It's always packed, but that's what you get for being the best. Mm -hmm. People want to go there. Yeah. What'd I you get? That. I had three potato balls and a Cuban sandwich. That sounds amazing. <clears throat> awesome. Dude, good Cuban. stuff. I like Cuban sandwiches. That's good. We're going to get some. We're going to be in Miami tomorrow. Oh, yeah. We're going to get arepas? We're going to get arepas again. They're yes. so good, dude. We're going to yes. go to Doggies and get some hot Yes, yes, yes. Chad, what's your quote of the week? 
My quote of the week comes from, uh, dude, super serendipitous. Ben Diesel, Toretto. Nice. I'll just play out part of the scene. Go, baby. Paul Walker and him are walking. Johnny Tran just shot up his eclipse and it exploded. So what the hell was that all about? A business deal that went sour. Plus, I made the mistake of sleeping with his sister. I can't believe he boned Johnny Tran's sister. Right? That's a huge risk to take. What always confused me is I thought he and Michelle and uh, Letty had been together since they were kids. Yeah, but you know Dom has his periods where he needs to, you know, spread his seed with loose women. Right, because there's that one point where he's like, he's like, uh... Natasha, what are you doing? What are you, what are you doing? Yoga? <laughs> oh, he asked her about her fitness regimen. Mm -hmm. Damn. And he's like, Monica. And then she goes, Rawr. I smell skank. Better leave before I leave tread marks on the back of your heads. <laughs> do you think that, do you think that like real like car people who drag race, you know, use those terms when they're talking to people. They're like, dude, you're blowing a lot of exhaust in my face right now, and it's too heavy. I was big in the scene when I was in my early teens. Mm. And, yeah, I mean, the dialogue in Fast and Furious is pulled straight from that world. Mm. It was like, it dropped me right back into it when I saw it for the first time. Wow. What was your ride? I had a Tacoma that I lowered and supercharged the engine. We used to race trucks. Mm because it was sick, but they were actually pretty slow. But that's right. kind of what made it sick. Yeah. It was like, I have the fastest slow car on the streets. Like, I have the fastest slow car, so if you need help moving, I'm your guy. Totally. Yeah. Did you put, you put boxes in the back of it too. Yeah, to I like, could get a couch from like Orange to San Clemente in like 20 minutes flat. So you had, you had like couch races and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, we used to race that was most of the races was helping a friend move. Right. And also loading the stuff into the back of the truck was part of the race. Yeah. And dude, we lost. It makes me sad, man, but we lost a lot of good furniture doing that. Mm. I rem remember my buddy's couch that we spent years playing Tony Hawk on just one time caught flight on the 73 and I just watched it soar away. And you can't turn around when you're on the freeway. It's always forward. That's right, because Ferraro forgot that one strap, huh? Yeah, I don't want to blame him, but, you know, he was in a hurry, and uh, mistakes were made. But it's not his fault, dog, because as captain of the race, I had to be on the lookout for that, you know? I had to have my eyes peeled, and I didn't, and now that couch is gone. Ferraro, if you're listening, sorry to bring up that wound, but we forgive you. I forgive you, too. Um, but you, sorry. you know what? I send him bungee cords every year. As a reminder? Yeah. Fuck, dude. That's savage. Yeah. That's fucking savage. Just keep savage. him in mind a little bit. That's fucking savage, bro. Yeah, I mean, you gotta do it. Yeah. He can't forget. I mean, he dominates me in CrossFit. I gotta dominate him in some ways, right? We all have our forte, dude. I asked him one time, like, why you lift so hard? He's like, to forget. <laughs> Uh, dude, my quote's similar. It's from the uh, the author, John Updike. He said, professionalism in art has this difficulty. To be professional is to be dependable. To be dependable is to be predictable. And predictability is aesthetically boring. An anti-virtue in a field where we hope to be astonished and startled at some deep level refreshed. Mm. And at some deep level refreshed. Updike with the fucking bang. Um, Chad, what's your phrase of the week for getting after it? My phrase of the week for getting after it is put some ponzu on that ass. Um, my phrase of the week for getting after it is extra wasabi. Wasabi. What's up? What's up? Dude, do you remember those commercials, dude? They're so, dude? Chicken, they're so dude. funny, dude. Budweiser. What happened to commercials, me, dude? You came in with the Budweiser. Bud. Pink and pink. Why? Zer. What's up? What's up? Aaron, do you remember those commercials? What's up? What's up? What's up? For all you youngins out there, do you get on YouTube? Get enlightened. 
Mongo, hit us up too because uh, we gotta get you killed by ha uh, Haley Bieber, dog. Yeah, let's put it on the books, Mongo. And it's gonna be for the good of the world because it's gonna save their relationship and make the younger generation believe in true love. For sure. All right, love you guys. Bye bye. Good buggy. If you need advice.